this is jayendra khatod and i am here to chart the best fit on azure in today's episode we will pick up another azure service and try to deep dive as usual into the pricing and sizing aspects so that you can create the most optimized consumption plan for your customers and it's my pleasure to welcome back our guest speaker bhaskar for this continued series Hey Vaskar it's pleasure to have you back on this show and why don't you tell our viewers which service are you picking up today Hello all welcome to the today's episode on chart the best fit for azure data factory today we are going to discuss on the key components that we should look into for cost estimation of azure data factory based on your customer workloads There are two types of services provided in Azure Data Factory or Synapse workspace for ELT or ETL operations. First is data pipelines. Data pipelines are like control flows which orchestrate the data movement through a sequence of steps or activities. And we have secondly we have SQL Server integration services where Azure Data Factory provides a fully managed environment for executing the ssas packages which are hosted on ssas db catalog and uh, in azure sql or the sql uh, managed instance pricing of data pipeline depends on multiple fa- factors let's look into those so as you see here pricing of data pipeline is calculated based on pipeline execution and orchestration data flow execution and debugging and the number of data factory operations such as create pipelines and pipeline monitoring and it could also include read write operations so before we deep dive into each of these factors or components let's understand what is integration runtime because based on the integration runtime or the type of integration runtime you choose the price varies as per as you see in this particular table so integration com- uh, runtime is the compute infrastructure used by azure data factory and azure synapse pipelines azure integration runtime is the fully managed compute natively uh, to uh, to natively perform data movement operations and uh, dispatch data transformation activities to different compute services like uh, databricks as inside etc and we have a azure managed vnet integration runtime where it's the same azure integration runtime but provisioned with a uh, managed virtual network and it uses private endpoints to securely connect uh, to this uh, supported data sources next we have a self hosted integration runtime which is again the compute infra- infrastructure hosted in an on prem or azure vm uh, on a private virtual network and where uh, where the data factory or synapse work uh, pipelines uh, uses uh, this infrastructure to provide data integration capabilities across different network environments and it also helps to securely transfer your data from on premises or private network so uh, let's look into each component here in this table like here orchestration refers to a activity runs trigger executions and debug runs how many uh, based on that a number of runs you would be charged ac- accordingly based on the integration runtime and we have a data movement activity it refers to the data movement across different sources and destinations and the movement of data requires uh, compute memory and network resources which is combined into a unit called as data integration unit and diu is applicable only for uh, azure integration runtime and not self hosted integration runtime mm-hmm. say for example in the copy activity you can configure the number of dius that you want to provision and it varies between 2 to 256 if you are not specified or if you choose auto in the ui screen then the service will dynamically apply the optimal diu setting based on your workloads uh, uh, workloads and data patterns and the source and destinations and here pricing is based on the number of hours 
and the DI units are located. Next, we have a pipeline activity, or these are called as internal activities also. So here, uh, pipeline activity, uh, these activities which execute on integration runtime using the uh, infrastructure provided. So it includes uh, the activities like lookup, get data, get metadata, delete or schema operations during uh, authoring or uh, or you, it could be a browsing the folder list or a table list or get schema and preview data all these operations are called as uh, internal activities and we have a pipeline activity external pipeline activity these are activities which are managed on integration runtime but executed on linked services the it could be uh, it, it, it includes Databricks or a store processor or SD site activities. So next we have a data flow on execution debugging. So here data flows are nothing but a no code components or a visually designed components where you can drag and drop uh, which uh, into the uh, UI uh, canvas, which enable the data transformations at scale. So here you will you'd be provisioning the data flow cluster for executing or debugging and the uh, data transformations and you are charged uh, based on based on the per week or hours that you are running so based on the type of cluster that you have chosen you would be charged accordingly and next we have a data flow operations here we have two uh, two kinds of operations one is read write operations and a monitoring operations read write operations include create a cred operation basically on the uh, entities like uh, data sets link services pipelines and integration runtime and triggers and we have monitoring operations which include list of pipeline activity uh, triggers or uh, debug uh, de uh, debug runs so it includes the monitoring activities. So let's consider a simple example uh, to understand how the number of activities that we have to choose or what are the uh, different types of uh, number of activities or the uh, number of hours that we are running. So, so this is a simple example of an incremental load uh, of uh, using a watermark approach where we are transferring the data from a Azure SQL uh, to a blob storage where I have a two uh, water uh, lookup activities and we have a one copy activity and a stored processor activity. So, uh, so as you see here, the number of activities are four and we have two lookup activities, one copy activity and a stored processor activity. Say for example, if I consider for one pipeline, if I'm running, so the number of activity runs should be four based on this particular pipeline and we have two lookup activities and if i assume it it takes two minutes to run then it would be four minutes and if i consider store pressure activity it takes two minutes so the uh, number of hours or uh, it would be two minutes and copy activity would be uh, consider copy activity or uh, text for data movement between source to destination is 10 minutes so these are the assumptions that i have made and consider if i uh, do this for execute the same pipeline for 30 days then it would be 30 into 4 that is the uh, number of activities would be 120 activities and 30 into 4 minutes that would be lookup activity would take 120 minutes and we have a, a short pressure activity which is 30 days into 2 minutes which is like 60 minutes and we have a copy activity which is running for 10 minutes and if I consider it for 30 days, it would be 300 minutes. So this is for 30 days and one single table. If I consider 50 tables and 30 uh, daily runs, so this would go up like uh, 30 days, uh, so one uh, 30 days into four into 50. 50 tables is which could be 60, uh, 6,000 uh, activity runs and it could come up a uh, lookup activity uh, or the internal activity could come up to 6000 minutes and store processor activity would come to 3000 minutes and copy activity would come to 15000 minutes so these are uh, different uh, for each activity so if i convert these minutes into hours so lookup activity would run for 
uh, for a month for 50 tables it would run for 100 hours and we have a store pressure activity which would run for 50 hours and copy activity which is for data movement it should take 250 hours so with this uh, numbers uh, let's go to the azure pricing calculator So this is the pricing calculator when you go to analytics and here you have a data factory. So once you click on that, you have option to choose the reason where you want to provision the data factory and the type of uh, version V2. And we have a two services as we saw earlier. SSIS would give the Azure uh, compute and uh, infrastructure to uh, provision or uh, execute the SSIS packages. So here again, you have a, uh, you can you can run the standard or SSI, SSI package de developed in standard or enterprise edition. And you have an instance based on this, you would be charged. So let's go to the data pipeline. And here you have, as you see here, based on the integration runtime, you can choose the orchestration and execution and different operations here. Since I'm using uh, the data uh, flow or the incremental load bit within the Azure, so Azure integration runtime would be used and I'm not using any managed VNet. So considering uh, based on our example, so we have, let me, So number of activity runs are 6,000. So I'll say since here the activity runs are in thousand, so I'll put input six, so which will become 6,000 runs. And data integration uh, hours, uh, in integration unit hours, if I check the copy activity, which is the actual data moment, so it would take 250 hours. So let's do that. And we have pipeline activity execution hours. So here we have we had lookup activities, which was running for 100 hours. Let me add those here. And we have a external pipeline activities where we have a stored processor activity, which could run for 50 hours. So this would be the pricing. And be very cautious in estimating this DIU hours because uh, increasing this matters area, uh, very much here. Like if I say instead of 250, if I put 2,500, uh, the cost would drastically increase. So we need to estimate this right. So based, so accordingly, you you can choose. The if you have any managed VNet, you can choose you can add the orchestration or the number of activity runs and uh, the uh, external number of hours that it, it is executing. You can add those here, and if it is a self hosted, you can add the uh, metrics here or the telemetry here. And we have a cluster configuration where you can where you can see here minimum is eight week course you can provision for data flow activities or debugging. And based on based on this, your cluster would be allocated and you can choose how many hours that you want to run or how many instances that you need uh, for pro running the data flow activities. So you can choose based between general purpose and mem memory optimized cores. And we also have uh, data factory operations. Say, for example, if I'm reading uh, 50 activities. So, so here it is. Here, entity units is based on 50,000 uh, activities. For per 50,000, it would be charged 0 0.50. So, if I even if I consider 50,000 uh, entities that I'm going to read or write, the cost is 0 0.50 uh, or 5, 50 cents. And if I consider uh, monitoring activities, would be uh, 50,000 again. So, it would be this would be the cost. And so for this pipeline based on our example, the cost would running the uh, incremental load for 50 tables for 30 days 
would come up to this value. So this is how you can provision the uh, or estimate the uh, cost for your data factory. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much, Bhaskar, for joining us again in this episode of Chart the Best Fit on Azure and helping our viewers understand how to create the most optimized consumption plan for Azure Data Factory Pipelines or Synapse Pipelines. Thank you, Jaindra. Pleasure is mine. And that's about it for this episode, folks. Don't forget to check out additional information available in the description of the video. Until next time, keep learning.